Hey there, McAllister with Toasty DIY, and today I'm doing a video over prompt engineering. So if you started to get into AI, you may have noticed that you type in a prompt for one thing and you get a result that's not exactly what you're looking for. So this video is gonna be 10 tips that'll help you judge where you are from beginner to expert. You know, if you're doing these things, you're probably in the beginner territory, but if you're looking at these farther advanced things, you're probably already in the expert territory. So hopefully this will help you decide where you are and where your knowledge is and give you somewhere to grow if you're in the lower categories in this list. So we'll start with beginner. Tip number one is to make sure that you're using the correct AI for the job. So if you're trying to do something like write a book or write a D&D session or something like that and you really like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a pretty intense show. A lot of scenes that I'll tell you right now, ChatGPT would not be able to write. It would flag you for inappropriate content and kick you right off. So if you're looking to write something that's a little bit more heavy or dark, you might look at an uh, AI like Novel AI. Novel AI doesn't have any sort of censorship filter that'll stop you so you can write, you know, darker fantasy or things like that, but just something that you couldn't write with ChatGPT. And now it may not be as solid of an AI. It doesn't know as much about literary ideas. It kind of runs in repetitive patterns. It'll at least be a better idea than running it into ChatGPT and then it telling you, hey, sorry, this content, we can't do it. I do recommend if you're looking at doing something, you're having issues, you might just check to make sure the AI you're using is the correct one. Obviously you wouldn't use an art AI to generate a story and you wouldn't use a story AI to generate art. Tip number two is to make sure you know what your goal is. If you go in confused and you kind of give the robot more than it needs, you might confuse it and then you get these weird degenerative prompts where it's just starting to get more and more bogged down with details that you didn't mean to use. So make sure that when you're going in, you give ChatGPT a clear goal. Say something like, I want you to act like a blank, or I'm looking for this, or write this email with this, things like that. You wanna make sure that you're giving it a nice and easy, kinda of like you're tossing it up a real easy catch. You don't wanna give it anything confusing or it might get confused and then you'll be sitting there wondering why it's not jittering what you think it can. Tip number three is to give up. Sort of. So when you start getting into one of these degenerative prompts, like in tip number two I described, where it's just giving you weird info after wrong info after bad info, you wanna go through and just scrap it. Take what you've learned from that conversation, what it got bogged down on, and make sure you're not asking for it involuntarily or voluntarily. If it's giving you this weird stuff, then either regenerate your prompt, come up with a new one, or use what you've learned to start from a further point in your prompt on a new AI. It is rolling the dice every time. It's predicting what the next word it's gonna generate is. So if it's not working, go back, try again, because it may generate a new word in that spot. You also have the regenerate response feature on the side. So if you don't like where it's starting to go, quickly stop it. Because once that train starts heading off course, it can be really hard to, to stop. Those were all beginner tips that I think people will grasp on their own as they interact with AI and learn about it. It's just something that you start to get a feel for the more you do it. So the more you expose yourself, the more you're gonna start to realize those things are true and you'll start to, to learn and grow. So we're gonna go ahead and move on from our beginner tips to our novice tips. So now you're starting to become comfortable with AI and you're starting to realize some more intricacies of the platform. So let's talk about what we can do to improve further. Tip number four, the beginner novice tips is to learn about prompt engineering. So whenever you have a prompt that doesn't generate what you want, look at what you asked for and start to dissect it. So we're gonna use Midjourney for this one and I'm gonna just show you a basic one. I asked for a logo of a spaceship clearing the atmosphere in red and black. This is what I got. Now, it's pretty cool, better than what I could do. I'm not complaining here, but it's not a logo for a business. Far too complicated, not what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and change up the prompt a little bit. I asked for a logo of a spaceship clearing the atmosphere, a little wordy. Let's ask for a business logo. So it has, you know, this other database. Now it's gonna look at business logos. And it's gonna be more like that, hopefully. So I asked for a business logo of a ship taking off instead of clearing the atmosphere. I'm gonna say, I want it launching or taking off. And then I'm gonna say in red and black. And let's see what we get. And that's, we're moving in the right direction, but we're not quite there yet. So let's look further. We're gonna keep everything we had, but we're gonna actually tag on another word instead of changing anything, we're gonna change it to minimalistic. And that's gonna hopefully draw down the number of assets in this design so we get something really simple. And we'll generate that and we're getting closer. So I'm sure if I kept engineering this prompt, I might eventually get to a logo that I'm happy with, or I might find keywords that really help me. But we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next tip, which is tip number five, a reference artist. Whenever you're using any sort of art generating AI, it is really, really important that you try to find a way to teach the AI what you're looking for. And a lot of times you're probably inspired by something you've seen already and you want that sort of style and you're failing to get it to emulate that. So what you could do is ask for it in the style of blank. 
And let's say you don't know what lens flare is, but you really like the Star Trek movies by J.J. Abrams. You might say, I want a shot of a spaceship in the style of J.J. Abrams. And I have a strong feeling one of your variations will generate with lens flare. But the nice thing is you didn't have to know what it is that makes it J.J. Abrams. You, may, you didn't have to know what lens flare was. That's a term that you may already know or you may not, but you definitely may not know terms about brush strokes or how they do these certain special art patterns for artists that are at the top of their game. You probably won't know the terms they would use to describe their art and create that sort of style. So instead of trying to find out exactly what kind of brush stroke technique they use to emulate that and saying, do that brush stroke, you instead say, do it in the style of this artist. So just to send this one home, I went ahead and asked for it to generate a painting of a castle right here. And then I asked it to generate one in the style of Salvador Dali. I did one in the style of Katsushika Hakusai. I can't quite pronounce that, but just kind of a Japanese style. And then I asked for one from the style of Studio Ghibli, which makes a lot of movies like Spirited Away. And we got different results from each, but you can see clearly inspired by different artists. And that'll help you a lot find the style you're looking for. Tip number six is to give the AI keywords. So keywords you, I've been listing through this whole time and changing them out like that minimalistic earlier and things like that, but it's really important that you learn keywords. So if you're looking to write an email to your boss and it's very important, your boss, uses the term client instead of customer. You may generate your first email and it calls it a customer and you may want to be, no, no, I needed to say client. That's our terminology around the office. So you say, please generate this email using the keyword client instead of customer, or just say client and it probably will guess not to use customer. Different keywords like this can improve your generations tenfold. The keywords are really like the thesis to the AI. They help it know what underlying tones it's going for. So if you say, hey, make sure you use keywords like I'm excited or it was great to see you, things like that. They'll likely get generated exactly in or their tone will be put inside of it. So that'll make it really easy for you to generate things in more of your tone than the AI's tone because you're giving it a frame of reference instead of just telling it to write a professional email where it'll write it in a very bland, blank tone that everyone can write in versus telling it to include certain words. Like I always sign off my emails with cheers. So if I do that, I believe the AI is gonna see that and generate a more positive or fun environment. And another way I use it is when we get ad spots from companies, I went ahead and take their list of everything they give us and I go ahead and copy out keywords they like. So if they're talking about a keyboard and they say we have switches, they won't just say we have switches, every keyboard has switches, but they'll say we have TTC speed silvers. And so when I ask it to generate some basic ad read scripts for me to go ahead and get started, it generates it with the keywords I'm already gonna have to either replace with later if it doesn't do it itself, or I'm gonna have to go in and just change out everything because it didn't know what the client found important about the device. All right, so now moving from novice, we're moving on to intermediate. And so they're gonna start here with tip number seven, which is to use AI to generate your prompts. So if you find yourself in a loop and you're struggling to, to figure out what to do, maybe to generate something in mid journey or another art generator, you might be having a problem because you're just struggling to find good keywords. Well, ChatGPT understands what keywords are, so you can ask it to help generate a prompt. You can tell it what you're looking for, or you can just say, hey, I wanna generate a business logo. Give me five prompts that include the keywords rocket ship, launch, and in the style of an artist that makes logos. And once you ask it to do in the style of these graphic designers, you, there's probably a lot of graphic designers that you've seen their work that you don't know that you love their style. And by asking it to generate these, you're gonna get the names and prompts you can just take directly into mid journey and drop them in there. So it's a really good idea to kind of use AI to diagnose itself. If you're running into issues where you're just failing to find new ways to spice it up, ask the AI to help you. It's, it's more than capable of creating new phrases or new things that you can use in your next prompt. Tip number eight is really simple, but I saved it for later because it costs money. And that is you might want to pay for your AI. It allows you to produce things quicker if you're going in the line of ChatGPT. You get the Model 3.5 engine, which is the 3.0 engine, just faster. And it lets you get out way more prompts, way faster. So I recommend it highly if you are somebody who uses it, especially during work hours and other people are generating. It takes forever if you're on the slower models, especially on a really busy day. And a warning for those who are looking at trying to get into the subscription model of ChatGPT, if you are doing that, it will be blocked during peak hours because they're trying to limit, I guess, bandwidth of people coming in and out. So you probably wanna look for odd hours during the work day or maybe like later on a Sunday. I said my, my brother said he had success with that. So if you are struggling to get into the program, you can't be doing it when you need it. You gotta do it when you don't need it because that's when everybody else is on. For other models like Mid Journey, they don't even allow you to generate when it's not in the off hours. So if you wanna use them, pay for them. For me, it ends up being about 30 bucks a month to have ChatGPT model 4.0 and the 3.5 engine and mid journey, the basic beginner package so I can generate pretty quickly. 
and be on at any time of the day. And at the point where you're paying for it, I think you're kind of showing you have a commitment, you're gonna to continue to use AI. That's why I put it up in this level. And last but not least, we're moving into the expert category. To be transparent here, I'm learning still. So these are what I believe an expert would know. This is not things that you're gonna find me using in every prompt, but it's things I'm trying to incorporate in what I believe is the next step for me. And my journey, I believe, is the step that experts take that really push them to a, a knowledge level beyond what most people are at. And that is tip number nine, is to be in a community. If you're looking for communities, a really good one would be, as I've said a million times, Mid Journey. A, there's a feature of Mid Journey that at first is very frustrating. It takes place on a Discord server. So you have lines of messages just going up and down, people generating, 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 all these different chat rooms. And it's hard to get one where it's private, where you can just generate stuff on your own. And at first that can be frustrating because you put in a prompt you want, and then it gets flooded out by some guy generating 20 pictures of something else. So instead of getting frustrated, look at the prompts that you're saying that you're enjoying. When you're seeing a really cool psychedelic picture of Jimi Hendrix that somebody's generating, you're like, wow, that's awesome. How did they do that? I would love to generate an image like that. You can see their prompt is right there for everyone to see. That is an awesome thing that initially was a downside for me with Midterm. It was that I just kept going on there and I would see people's prompts, flush mine out of there, and I'd get frustrated. And then I realized I can take the prompts I'm saying that I love and take keywords. I can just steal the ones I like. And there are all sorts of places that you can do this for places like ChatGPT. I'm sure the subreddit has people with good prompts and things like that. You can just go through and find prompts that you think are constructive for you that will help you generate the outcome you're looking for. And if not, maybe you find ones that are just fun. Maybe you can find a really good one that can turn ChatGPT into a comedian and you wanna steal some good one-liners for a party. Maybe you want some really good intros to book or writing prompts. Go on there, experiment, find some different things. There are all sorts of different places you can go to look for prompt engineers. And I'm sure there's a Discord server for it. I'm sure that the subreddit for ChatGPT is going strong with it things like that. Just try to find some places where you can get involved with other people who are better than you already that have learned and failed and you can just take their experience and run. And just for kicks, I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of keywords that I saw that were really interesting and people were getting good results in mid journey. Things like minus, minus AR, 16 by nine, isometric, fluid feedback, earth color palette, things that I wouldn't have thought about. And I throw them all in one prompt and ask for a warrior in that style and that's what I got. So an interesting one and I like this isometric style. I wouldn't have thought of that keyword, but I really enjoy it. And my last tip is to learn AI specific keywords, things that aren't natural that you wouldn't say to somebody. So for instance, if I wanted somebody to get me a picture of a woman in the rain holding an umbrella, I'd probably ask for that. If I wanted them to not have the umbrella, I'd say, hey, make sure she's not holding an umbrella. I want her out in the rain. A person would be able to go get that picture if they had the time and resources. However, if I was to ask an AI for a picture of a woman in the rain, I can say with no um umbrella, or I could say minus umbrella. If I say this, the AI is gonna know what an umbrella looks like from a pixel standpoint, and it will try to avoid that. So I might use it for, I want a portrait of somebody, but it gives me this bokeh effect, so I might say minus blurry, things like that. So positive will mean it tries to reinforce and have that in the shot, so I said positive umbrella, it would likely try to do an umbrella in that shot. If I said minus umbrella, it's gonna try to avoid it. So I don't know too many of these. Positive and negative are the only ones I know, and I, as far as I'm aware, they only work on Dolly 2. I've not tried them in Mid Journey, but if you're asking the AI for minus or positive of that thing, and I mean the plus sign or negative sign, then you're gonna get a result that either favors or disfavors that. So there are surely more of these out there, maybe putting in colon, maybe parentheses, these special characters that might tell the AI to do something very specific that I think a person better than myself would know and then take advantage of. And that's what I think is an expert in AI. And that's where I think the best people are probably hanging out and learning more about and fine tuning. So that's everything I know about AI and that I think I could share with you all tips and tricks wise. I appreciate you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Peace and take care.